This special documentary presentation is brought to you without commercial interruption by AdjusterTVPlus.com. It's extremely hard to find clear and accurate information about how to get started as an independent adjuster. With premium Adjuster TV Plus videos, you can help people in their time of crisis and earn a great living as a claims professional. Watch real adjusters demonstrate advanced claims handling with our unique virtual ride-alongs. Ride along with us on AdjusterTVPlus.com. It's been exactly one week since Hurricane Ida made landfall here in southern Louisiana. And we're back trying to retrieve our surge probes. We deployed these the morning that the storm made landfall, and we know that they're likely still there, but we have absolutely no clue if the hardware survived and if they were even able to catch anything with those catastrophic winds. There's homes that are completely washed away as opposed to just the roof damage further north. The whole entire home was taken by the storm surge and by the wind and just deposited elsewhere downstream. A lot of areas down here were completely unsurvivable for sure. That's why we have probes. That's why we have probes. The drive down Interstate 10 has become a familiar one over the past year. In August of 2020, Hurricane Laura ravaged Lake Charles. Then Delta and Zeta struck back to back in the month of October. Louisiana was the absolute last place any of us wanted to intercept a hurricane this year. But here we were, yet again, staring down the barrel of a strengthening hurricane, making a beeline towards the bayou. I left Norman, Oklahoma on August 27th with my trusty chase partner Evan Hatch and our friend Michael Hoynes. As always, we stocked up on supplies well outside of the affected area to keep our impact on valuable resources to a minimum. One of the main goals for this trip was to deploy our surge probes. These are designed to document the conditions in areas that are just too dangerous for us to stay. I built these over a year ago and have deployed them on every hurricane we've chased, but they've never captured anything remarkable. Whether it's a nighttime landfall or just bad placement, these probes have yet to reach their full potential. On the morning of August 29th, we woke up at 3 a.m. to discover Ida was a strong Category 4, borderline Category 5 hurricane. At this point, we knew it was not a good idea to ride it out along the coast, for we feared a 15-foot storm surge that might overtop the levees. Instead, we opted for an intercept in Matthews, Louisiana. It's about 20 miles inland, and we believed we would be safe from the storm surge there. This appeared to be the perfect opportunity to utilize the probes. They could document the landfall point south of Golden Meadow where the full force of Ida would be felt while we played it safe up in Matthews. We deployed our first surge probe on the levee system south of Golden Meadow. We hoped this would capture the rise of the storm surge and could even provide insight if the levee were to fail. The next probe was deployed about a mile back towards town on some high tension power lines. After the sun rose, we made our way back to Matthews as the outer bands of Hurricane Ida made their way inland. It didn't take long for the probes to start getting their first taste of hurricane force winds. Back in Matthews, we were still only getting tropical storm force winds. That house. Oh yeah. Some already, siding damage. Already getting the siding taken off of houses here, and it is barely, just barely picking up. Uh, things are going to get a lot worse. As expected, the storm surge started creeping in as the eye wall approached. Here you can see just how quickly it rises in 30 minutes. As the eye wall approached, the storm surge continued to rise and conditions deteriorated. Then, 
Then, by noon, the probes entered the eyewall of Hurricane Ida, where winds of over 150 miles per hour were present. At this point, the storm surge is at the top of the levees. You can see debris getting thrown over the top and waves crashing onto the probe. Let's go back just two short hours so you can see how bad the conditions really were. As the probes entered the back half of Hurricane Ida, we started getting our first hurricane force conditions up in Matthews. As the eyewall made its way towards our location in Matthews, we retreated to our safe spot, which was a concrete wall behind the stadium near the school. This allowed us to be protected from the wind and flying debris, while still letting us look out into the onslaught of Hurricane Ida. Look at those clouds. As we exited the inner eyewall and started getting into the eye, we decided we were going to do a quick damage survey and then get the heck out of there. We knew there was no way we were going to make it down to Gold Meadow with all the downed trees and lines, and we wanted to get out of the way for the emergency crews so they could start doing their work. As we made our exit, we still had to go through the back half of the hurricane. Thankfully it was the western eyewall so it was not nearly as intense, but we still had to dodge down trees on Highway 90. As the sun began to set on the bayou, a grim picture was painted. The once untouched marshlands were now littered with debris from damaged homes. Here's the 12 hour difference from sunrise to sunset.
Exactly one week later, Evan and I went back down and retrieved the surge probes while documenting some of the aftermath. Crews were desperately trying to restore power to the area, while residents waited in long lines to get fuel from gas trucks. If you are able, please consider donating to help these poor people get through one of the worst times they will ever experience. Until next time, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. This is Adjuster TV.